fact that I was brought up on books about cats, I have a recollection of having read Mogsy Forgetful Cat. This is the first book in the Mog series by Judith Kerr. It was released in 1970. I'll be honest, I had no idea there were quite so many of these. So I decided to check it out, finally, and actually see what it was all about. And <laughs> it's a little bit ludicrous. It's actually very sweet, but the ending of it, the illustration, is utterly hilariously ridiculous. I will discuss that as a brief spoiler. I have actually just read something on Wikipedia. Um, I was getting the dates for the book. It, there is a spoiler in the first paragraph on the Mog entry on Wikipedia that says what happens in the final book that was released in 2002. Word of advice, if you haven't read these books and plan to, don't go to Wikipedia. I will not spoil anything until I will give a brief spoiler warning and mention how Mog the Forgetful Cat ends. Mog is a beautiful cat. Mog is a Moggy. She has a gorgeous design. Uh, I think the style of Mog is really beautiful. And in this first book, Mog is causing havoc for the family. Um, they're having, you know, they all love Mog, but she's getting in the way. She's chewing somebody's hair. She's knocking something over. And it seems like she's just a bit of a nuisance because she forgets things. She forgets her human is not a kitten. She forgets that this is somebody's feet. And as the story progresses, she forgets more and more. And then she gets locked outside. And she forgets that she has a cat flap. This is something that happens. How will she get back in? I will save that for the spoiler at the end. Um, but it's it's very sweet. It's not dramatically long. If I just find out the page count on Amazon, this says that it's 40 pages, um, which seems longer than I remember. Um, it's certainly only a sentence or two on each page, each one accompanied with really very beautiful illustrations. I really, really love the illustrations. It's illustrated by Judith Kerr as well as written by. And although sometimes Mog may look larger than necessary and her facial expressions may be quite entertaining, really beautiful illustrations to accompany each page. And I can't really fault it. Um, it. It's not the easiest to read, by which I mean I feel like the, the print, the, the story is juvenile, but the print is quite small, which is a criticism on the publication, not on the writing. The dialogue between the characters makes sense. The vocabulary is pretty good. I'm not sure what the target audience is specifically, um, but I would say kind of, five to seven, five to eight, depending on reading abilities. It's not the most complicated in terms of vocabulary, and the narrative is pretty simple. The sentence structure is very basic. I don't think there's a comma in this, um, to the best of my recollection, apart from in dialogue. It's easy, very easy to follow. So I think it fits the target audience well. Now, even if I said, this is rubbish, this doesn't make any sense, and it's not really suitably written for a child. That's not the case. But even if it was, this book is 50 odd years old and is beloved by many people. So that opinion would just be invalid, let's be honest. But I did enjoy it. I feel like it does speak to the child quite well. I feel like the vocabulary is suitable, the sentence structure, the sentence length all work fine. The layout of the sentences could be a bit better, but the accompanying, accompanying, hmm, accompanying illustrations are beautiful and are certainly talking points for young children who have yet to learn to read. I think it's a good one to learn to read alongside the illustrations. The ending. The ending of this book. So this is the only spoiler that I'm giving. But at the end, the cat gets back in the house because she sees a man in the window and meows to get in. This man is startled and wakes the household. It turns out this man was a burglar, which is a fun way to end the narrative but what amused me to no end is that in the final or maybe the penultimate illustration the policeman is talking to the Thomas family and taking notes and the burglar is just standing there having a cup of tea I just thought it was hilarious 
uh, not the most realistic representation of what happens when a criminal is caught in the act. But well done, Mog, for saving the day. From what I understand, from what I've briefly read about some of the other Mog books, Mog is perhaps a little ditzy and forgetful and causes a bit of catastrophe and then ends up saving the day and is actually the hero. I don't know if that's the case for all of them, but as far as I can tell, that is what happens. I still have no recollection of this, having now read it. The story was completely unknown to me. But now that I have read it, I enjoyed it. I thought it was cute. I thought it was imaginative. I thought it had a lot going for it. I can see why it's popular. Um, I do still feel like there are problems with it. For example, the representative of the representation of the burglar, the way in which the paragraphs, the sentences are laid out, I feel like it could be easier on the eye and easier to read. And Mog, Mog's life is a little bit negative until she's hailed as the hero. I feel like she needs a little bit more love and attention from the family. But I can still see why M Mog, because of the beautiful illustrations, is very engaging. Some good vocabulary, some good talking points. Definitely one that I can understand being popular for a long time coming. <laughs>